What's up folks, we're back with a mobile EV charger build. So what's happened here is that Westinghouse wanted to participate in this giveaway and we talked them into giving us the WGen 20,000. So now we have a 20 kW unit as opposed to a 12 kW unit. So whoever wins this unit is going to get a much larger generator as the heart of the mobile EV charger build. So let's talk some specs on the WGen 20,000. This unit will run at about 83 amps full on. One of the reasons why I wanted the 20,000 for the heart of the new mobile EV charger giveaway was if somebody is running fleet operations and let's say they have a contract with a rental car agency and this is not unusual where you are charging multiple vehicles at one location, you can now charge on this unit two vehicles at 40 amps right out of the 1450s. Like we have a Tesla wall connector here and let's say you wanna use an Emporia also and you wanna just plug them in the front and you wanna charge two cars, you can do that with this generator. Other thing is that the reality is whoever wins this, if they wanna use this as a small home backup unit, it can be used as that too. It is more than big enough to be used for a small home backup unit. Westinghouse does have some really cool accessories. They do have some transfer switches, so it can almost be used as an on-demand. If you want more on that, visit Westinghouse's website. They have some really cool accessories for this. But back to the build. Okay, so when you are assembling the mobile EV charger, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do to make this process easier, and it's something I found on the last one because I didn't take the fuel tank off. Taking the fuel tank off makes this entire process a whole lot easier. So. What you're gonna do is the lifting bar comes with the unit and it's not attached. So if you've not attached the lifting bar, just don't put it on. If you have put it on, take it back off. From there, there are four eight millimeter bolts on the perimeter of the fuel tank. All you're gonna do is remove all of these. You have this vent tube. You've got that little clamp. Take care of needing all those pliers. Back the clamp off. This is a vent or a breather. I'm not sure what this is, but you're gonna have to remove that. Your four bolts, take those out. Then this is the easiest way to handle the fuel tank. Just take and pick it up. This only has about a gallon of fuel in it too. So if you're gonna do this when you take delivery of the unit, don't put a bunch of fuel in it and just move it aside like that. That's all the room you need. From there, we're gonna show you how we mounted the wall connector. But first I'm gonna take the front of the Tesla universal wall connector off, show you how we wired the wall connector and then how we mounted the bracket back here. Now down here in the wall connector box, we've made all the connections that Tesla recommends going left to right, green, red, black. Again, we're not using the neutral on this, so it's all coiled up down here. And this time what we've done is we've just left this in the normal factory loom and we are plugging into the 1450 on the front of the generator and we intend to run the wall connector at 40 amps. Now the reason why we're going through the front and we're only running at 40 amps is while you were down there you may have seen the second 1450 where you could plug in a second wall connector. We will be plugging in a second wall connector and we will be charging two cars and there may be a video in the future where you see us charging three cars so you have to stay tuned for that. But Let's get in the rest of the build and go up top. As for the mounting of the box for the wall connector, we did the exact same thing we did on the last build. We just used an old metal shelf, that's all it is. And then we mounted the metal shelf to this bracket and then this down tube and then we mounted the wall connector through this top member and then through the shelf. We'll come around to the back side. you can see all that. This mounting was a little bit easier on the WGen 20,000 because this upper member is a little bit wider this way, so it's easier to get a hole in it. So all we did in this one was, we put a single hole here, use that screw to mount this end of it. And on the other one, on the WGen 12, we had another one here, but I discovered once we had it through bolted down here, we didn't actually need this one. So this one is mounted with one screw here, and then two screws through the down tube, which exit the other side right here. From there, the bracket is mounted. And then all we did to mount the wall connector to the generator was we went through the bracket on the bottom side and we went through the member on the top side coming around to the back again you can see it these are your screws exiting through that top member and then through the bracket down there and all of that makes for an extremely solid mount for the wall connector so the second build in i figured out what works what doesn't work kind of what's easier and i can tell you right now that the build on this one took probably 25% of the time as a build on the other one. The other one was easy, but we forgot to take the tank off, so that made a little more. I figured out some things with that build that made this build easier, but if you follow how we did it here on this one or the WGen 12, they will be extremely easy builds. So that's it. That's how you build a mobile EV charger with Westinghouse's WGen 20,000C. It's not much different than the last one we built. So like, subscribe, and stay tuned for the giveaway.